if anything can be said about uh, the mind, the way the mind works, if you really apply yourself to doing something 100% all, all of the time and forget about everything else, you end up somewhere. And so I ended up pretty much a, a master of what I'm doing, and that is making circuits and uh, of a spe special kind, analog circuits. When MIDI came out, I said, I don't want to know about it. One thing that's very obvious with synthesizers, it's hard to uh, take it to do like we do with a violin sonata, for example. A violin sonata can be played again and again, and it's always almost the same. It depends on the, the, the violinist. A, a synthesizer piece is very difficult to redo. I mean, could you imagine redoing it? Uh, I think uh, my destiny was to be, uh, uh, well, the word that came up was uh, to be a goofball. That's my destiny. And my, in, in the way that a ball rolls, I, I went through a lot of different stages. I was starting to get interested in electronics, uh, and that really became a passion. I was very, very lucky that I had friends uh, and these friends of mine introduced me to more to open the door to, you know, uh, use the space, uh, use these, this equipment, to hear some money for doing various projects. I, I learned how to do electronics. And then, of course, Mort had a friend named Buchler, and Buchler, of course, is a designer, is a genius designer of his own synthesizer, and I, I just by osmosis, and also because I was. Uh, I was always curious as to what was in back of the modules. In fact, Buchler uh, used to publish his schematics, and one thing that's really interesting, even back then, uh, he uh, insisted not to have a copyright. Uh, he insisted to have an X copyright, that is open for anyone to see. So. That was uh, another, he was uh, avant-garde in that respect too. So I learned what, uh, what his filters did, I learned what his oscillators did and all of that. And then of course uh, I, I spent a lot, of, uh, some time at, at Moog's place in Tumensburg. He was a fantastic guy. I was working at a school, and then one of the projects that Mort had designed was uh, we, we should do the, the work with the students and let the students uh, do their own things and f get the feel of what it, what it was like and maybe take something away with them. I, I saw that, uh, well, I could make this out of uh, cheaper materials and, and do a lot of shortcuts. My f early system was, had a lot of shortcuts, like the paper face, you know, uh, things like that, and, uh, and making them in kits and stuff. And so it was um, the aesthetic of the machine that was quite different. I want the electronics to suggest the sounds rather than the sounds to, to suggest the electronics. So at the place of making modules that tried to sound like a um, violin or sound like a uh, clarinet, I want to see what the devices themselves had to say. In a synthesizer, you can control filtration amplitude, frequency, all by control voltages separately from one another. And that to make a, a single sound, you would have to apply a voltage for the amplitude, a voltage for the, for the frequency, and a voltage for the rhythm. When I designed my uh, synthesizer, as opposed to when Moog designed his synthesizer, or uh, when um, most other synthesizer companies, except for uh, Buchler. The main intent on my part was to make uh, something that was, that allowed uh, separate, independent control of things. Whereas 
the attitude, uh, I believe, of Moog was to make an instrument that would sound like would have all the parts coordinated in such a way that it made music in the traditional sense, to make it sound like a, a musical instrument. So, uh, uh, so that's why you had keyboards and, uh, you know, it would relate. Uh, we weren't interested in keyboards. Uh, we were interested in other kinds of uh, controls of uh, the music. I would try to make things available from the electronics that would allow people to make sounds that they hadn't heard before, and not, not at all uh, the sound of traditional instruments. And the second thing I noticed in Buchler's uh, modules is that when analyzing his circuits, you saw incredible opportunities for unusual things that he didn't exter make available exter in the, on, on the outside. He wanted to dictate what the module did. It had to have an input, several outputs, and that's what it did. In between, there's a lot of interesting electronics. Very often, you just could snip one of Buchler's modules in three, and I'd have three modules. I made blocks that were interesting by themselves. I developed this kind of idea that which I call patch programmability. That is, you use all these elemental functions to do something else. And, and I left it up to the user, because I'm not the one to dictate anything. The system had already been built, had been demonstrated in San Diego, and, uh, and Don Buchler was there, and he, 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 he was the one that said, oh, you know, Serge, there's no money in synthesizers, but maybe he was trying to tell me, uh, don't be my competitor. <laughs> but because it actually, he, he must have seen that it actually this was a very serious piece of work and, and the filters were definitely better than anything he had ever designed uh, in terms of filters. Uh, that part of it, I won't, you know, <laughs> it's on film. <laughs> and so I calculated what the cost of building uh, X number of systems. I determined that we, if we got enough parts to build 20, I could make uh, uh, I could make a really decent synthesizer for five hundred dollars kit in in unbuilt. So that's how it uh, the the first kits were uh, funded. And a lot of people got huge systems because they could finally afford it. I mean, it was it was of course it was made with paper. Uh, out of paper and glue and, uh, you know, almost made with chewing gum. But, but on the other hand, they had to work a lot because they had to wire it up, uh, stuff boards, uh, do all kinds of um, that kind of work. So the first people were kids, uh, my, my associates, uh, myself included. Uh, and then a couple of universities started uh, uh, I sold quite a few to uh, universities like at Mills College and uh, Harvard and, and, um, and I was supposed to give two to CalArts, which I never did. <laughs>